treatment. Okay. If we have multiple victims in here, we're going to have to treat. Then I'm going to treat, recovery position, move to my next patient. Okay. And it may be that we're coming back and get this patient after we treat everybody, or it may be uh, another team is coming in and they'll start the extra patients. So either either way, so much to do, and this is um, kind of like getting our patients to a centralized area. If you can, like you've got three or four patients in here, or we may have one out in the hall. So we'll obviously, the train one in the hall back to this room, make a temporary casualty collection place right inside the tree, and then we'll get to again. So that's the bones in here. So we have some stuff. Y'all want to try tonight, bigger and better, whatever. I'm cool with that. So we kind of started with that. We want to kind of review over a little bit what we talked the other night about our priorities, our patient priorities, because obviously that's going to change in this scenario, right? In this situation, if it's after shooting, our uh, priorities kind of change a little bit, right? Uh, and where our casualty collection point is going to be. So if you respond here to the school, where do you think your casualty collection point would be? Where's the shooter? You wouldn't know makes a difference. So okay. It could be here, it could be the cafeteria, it could be the gym. Be we'll, we'll say they're in the gym. They've got the shooter at the gym. All the media center. Okay. The cafeteria. Okay. So. We have the media center. What about outside? I'm just thinking the weather might be an issue. What about across the street? issue to that? That's too hard to Okay. The, first, the kind of thing to think about, too, is where we're going to enter this. So if law enforcement is coming in here, where more than likely are they going to enter from? Front door. The office, right? They're going to be coming, coming in the front door through the office, right? So more than likely, our extricating point is going to be back the same direction that we come in. Okay, so the idea of law enforcement will be coming in here. Hopefully that deputy or whoever is coming in, school resource officer, whoever that person is, that's coming in. Hopefully they're radioing back to the RTF, which that's kind of what they're talking about. We're going to have somebody that's RTF, that's uh, not RTF, but basically fire command on the outside with the law enforcement. So hopefully they're getting hooked up with them. So as they've come in the building, they can say, hey, we've come in through the, um, by the office. Uh, I've got patients in the hallway, uh, in front of the office, whatever, down the hallway. One neat thing I seen y'all have here is the hallways are marked A, B, C, so um, there's some reference points there, so that's pretty nice for here. So hopefully that officer is giving the information out. Uh, here, gunshots, I'm proceeding you know, down B hallway, whatever he's doing, and he's radioing back where the patients are. Okay? As soon as he basically goes through this area and he knows the shooter's in that area, that is immediately when RTF should be activated. Okay? So we're going to go ahead and activate the teams then. What area do we know he's come through? Here. Okay, so we're following that same path travel basically as that initial team is making, just making contact with the shooter. Okay, so whoever has a knife or whatever the situation is. Okay, so we're going to come in that area and then that RTF team is going to be telling them, okay, I start treating patients here, okay, and then I have to decide, am I going to move my patients out or do I have more patients to treat? My personal opinion is kind of how you want to do it. My personal opinion is, as long as I have available equipment, you're already in the building, I want to treat as many patients as I can treat if I know I've got patients that need to be treated. Okay, so the, my initial ones, I'm going to treat, recovery position, and then I'm moving on. So your second team coming in can start moving the victims, or they may need to come to you if you're still treating patients. Okay, and then we're going to extricate them out to our casualty collection point. Again with that, probably somewhere out here, because that's probably our path of travel that we're coming in, we kind of want to go back out that same direction, okay, um, with our law enforcement. We're going to go back out that same direction, and probably what I'm going to do out here is I'm going to set up some apparatus, give our protection there for that casualty collection point with apparatus, because you're going to have law enforcement there too. Because again, we don't want to have to take patients a great distance. Okay, and then find somewhere for EMS to come in. You know, obviously, we're probably thinking about landing zone. We're probably thinking about other things uh, along with that, coordinating with our medics to, to get all the patients treated. Once they're at that casualty collection point, our job is pretty much done at that point. Okay, hopefully, um, in 
our opinion, the way we have our set up, is once they get to that casualty collection point, that's where EMS, that's where medics take over care. And that's where the, the normal triage starts. Okay, so that small triage where they're going through and they're tagging them, that's, that's the place that happens. Okay, so they've been triaging before. No, not other than our quick assessment, right? So they've not truly been, truly been assessed, right? <clears throat> so on the outside, you know, areas they need to be thinking about, okay, we've got our walking wounded, we've got our green tags over here, we've got a yellow tag, and we've got our, our red tags. So that's medic job, that's what hopefully they have somebody on the outside of the casualty collection point that are, that are doing that, decide who our priority patients are out there. This is the downside if you set up multiple casualty collection points. And it's been seen a lot of incidents. So if I have a casualty collection point here, and then we decide to set one up over here because we've got more patients, what's going to happen? Everybody fighting for resources and who's fighting. I need you. I need an ambulance over here. I've got three red tags, and then they're over here. Oh, I've got ten red. You know, and it's just going to be this this thing that's going to be. I mean, I'm not saying it's never going to happen. There may be a situation where you may have to do that, um, but we prefer to only have one cavity collection point because it's going to cut down on a lot of miscommunication that we all know is, is going to happen. Um, <coughs> so our patient priorities are what? So we come upon a patient. What's our patient priorities? March. Okay, March. Okay, which is what? What's our number one thing we're worried about? Hemorrhage, yeah. right? So immediate response should be we see bleeding, we're going to control bleeding immediately, right? Okay, so hemorrhage control is our number one priority in here. Okay, because again, most of our incident with people dying of preventable deaths is what? Bleeding, bleeding. hemorrhage. They're bleeding out. Okay, so that's our number one priority. We're going to control that bleeding. With tourniquet applications, um, packing the wound. If, if someone we can't place a tourniquet if you need to pack the wound, um, that type of thing. We're going to control that bleeding. Okay. Next is what? Airway. Airway. Airway, right? So basic airway maneuvers, right? So head tilt, chin lift, open the airway, and then what's the only other device that we're carrying for? Nasal pump. Okay, the nasal pump, right? So unconscious patient, pop a nasal pump it in. And we're we're good to go. Okay. Um, remember, if it's anybody that's not breathing once we open that airway, then they're what? They're black tag, and then we're gonna go on. Unless it's a situation where we know, hey, we've got care, and maybe we've got time. But for what we're talking about here tonight, we're just immediate stuff, immediate life threats that we can, you know, take care of very quickly, secure them, and then we're gonna move on. Okay. Um, and then, again, if you leave that patient, if they're responsive or unresponsive, I do not care which they are, I always put them in a recovery position. Okay? If they're still responsive, tell them. Helps on the way to you to get you out. But stay in the position I leave you in. In case you go unconscious, you will not die. Okay? Tell them. You've got to stay put where I have you. So hopefully if they do go unresponsive, we've secured that airway, and, and hopefully they're going to be good until we get another team that's, that's coming in to, to extricate. Um, as far as running it and swapping off, um, I don't really care how you do it. If you want to, one team treat, the next team comes in, bumps past them, that's totally fine. Or this team treats, bumps on, and then the second team in starts extricating the patients out. Um, however y'all choose to do that, that's totally fine. That's going to be up to whoever's on that RTF team that's in charge of that. Um, one thing that we've definitely found with that, obviously, hopefully it's a fire guide that's in control because law enforcement's concentrating on what? Security. Safety, that's security. That's the only thing they're worried about. So that person, whoever's command of that RTF team, I use it like them to treat last. Okay? That way they kind of have a little better vis visual. And as you come in, you can say, okay, you treat this patient, you're treating this patient, and they're assigning out people. And then that way they're kind of keeping track of what they got. They can radio back. Um, to command and say, you know, this is what injuries we have to kind of give EMS some heads up what they're looking for on the outside as far as, you know, if they're thinking about, you know, how many choppers they need or whatever the situation might be. Kind of talk about the situation.